I was a 19-year-old college student at UCLA, and my professor, Lou Perdue, was writing big conspiracy thrillers. And he would show me his manuscripts, and I'd give him advice on plotting and sex, even though I'd never plotted a thriller, I never had sex. But I still felt I was expert enough to tell him how to write his books. And one day, his publisher came to him and asked him if he'd write a men's action-adventure series, which was sort of the male equivalent of the Harlequin romance. They had titles like The Executioner, The Destroyer, The Liquidator, The Immolator, The Defecator, The Drooler. They all had E-R or O-R at the end, and some guy with an enormous gun on the cover, and explosions and women with, with giant hooters. And they sold like hotcakes at 7-Elevens and finer gas stations around the country. And Lou told his publisher that he wasn't hungry enough, desperate enough, or stupid enough to write a book like this. But he knew somebody who was, and he recommended me. And suddenly overnight, I'm a 19-year-old writing men's action adventure fiction. My hero is a guy named Brett Macklin, who's restoring vintage Cadillacs, and he's also a, a pilot. And his father's a cop who's killed by a street gang. So Brett investigates the crime and ends up taking revenge, and he becomes this vigilante known as Mr. Jury. I wanted to go for something more than a typical men's action adventure novel. I didn't want him just to be going around shooting people. I wanted to have impact on who he was. So after a day of killing, you know, he just, just doesn't just go out and have a steak. So I made my character impotent. You know, he goes to, starts to go to bed with a woman and he remembers the people he killed that day and he, and he can't get it up. And I thought this was really psychologically and emotionally meaningful and I was very proud of myself and I turned the book in and my publisher said, are you out of your mind? This is a men's action adventure series. Not only is he having sex, he's having incredible sex. You cannot have a men's action adventure hero who can't get it up. So I was so pissed off by this that I wrote these sex scenes that were physically impossible, that defied gravity. They were just ridiculous. He would look at a woman and she'd collapse from multiple orgasms and need oxygen. I just, I had outrageous positions. I just thought it was insane. And I turned my book in. A few weeks later, I got a call from my editor. I read the new scenes, Lee. I knew what the next line was going to be, and we're canceling the book contract. But that's not what he said. He said, not only were they hot, they were real. So I was so depressed, because if this was real sex, I was the most pathetic lover on the planet. And my first novel, um, it's called Judgment now, but it was originally called 357 Vigilante, came out the same day this guy Bernard Getz blew away some muggers on a New York subway train. So vigilantes were hot. It was a bestseller. New World Pictures bought the movie rights, hired me to write the script, and my screenwriting career was born. These are the first books I wrote, and you know what? They still stand up. They're still a lot of fun. I can see myself in every page.